Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Thursday the 24th of August 2023 in today's Mill News. A signing, we have signed a young exciting Premiership player, Brooke Norton Cuffey. This is from bbc.co.uk. Brooke Norton Cuffey, Arsenal fullback, joins me all on loan. Well, look at that picture. He's wearing Coventry City shirt. Yes, uh, he was on loan at Coventry City, where he played very, very well. Uh, Brooke Norton Cuffey featured 24 times for Coventry last season as the Sky Blues were beaten on penalties in the Championship playoff final. So there you go. He has some quality pedigree. He is a pretty decent player. Uh, Championship club Millwall have signed Arsenal right back Brook Newton Cuffey on loan until the end of the season. 19 year old who's yet to make his senior debut for the Premier League side had loan spells with Robin United and Coventry City last season. He became the Lions' sixth sign in the summer transfer window. He has exciting attributes that we feel can really strengthen the squad, Director of Football Operations Alex Aldridge told the club website. England under-20 international Norton Cuffey featured 21 times for Robin last season before making 24 appearances for Coventry as he helped the Sky Blues reach the Championship player final. He's played four times for Arsenal under-21s in the year four trophy and was also, has also spent time on loan at Lincoln City. So you would think that if he's coming to Millwall that he's been told that he's going to play. So what does that do for Danny McNamara? Um, probably puts him out of the team, I think. Because he's already been on loan in this uh, division last season. So why is he coming back? Um, interesting stuff. Uh, he seems to be a very, very, very good player. Uh, we have some pictures from training. Uh, Book Norton Cuffey's first meal training session. So he's already getting into it. Some uh, speak of him, uh, talk of him playing. On uh, Saturday against Stoke. So here we go. These are pictures from training. Not just of him, but of other players there. Interestingly, Joe Bryan is back. Can't see Casper Dinor, but Joe Bryan is back. Um. Vogel Sammer there, so he's not he hasn't gone to Germany for a um for some kind of uh talks or uh move to Germany yet, he's still here. So yes. That is not Casper Denor, that's Adam Barrett there. They they do look kind of similar to Um So yeah, here we go. Um, and we're back to the beginning. So interesting stuff. So now, Gary Rowett signing an attacking right wing back. So he can play the formation that he knows doesn't work. Uh, because what are, what are we going to do? We're going to bomb down the wings and cross the ball into nobody because we don't have a target there. Or are they going to cut back and then just tuck it inside and then that's what. So they're either going to whip it into the defenders who are just going to mop it up and clear it away. Or they're going to cut back and just pass it into, I presume, whoever's in the middle, Fleming or, or Nisbet or whoever. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we'll see. So he's got his, he's got his uh, attacking wing back now. Attacking right wing back. Obviously, he's been on Gary Rout's been on Danny Danny Max ass all all the time, saying he's not good enough going forward. Well, here we go. You've got your man. So, if this changes things, um, very well. If it doesn't, you're going to get slated. Uh, because this guy's really good. If he comes into our system, managed by Gary Rowett. And he has no effect because it's the system that's dog shit. Then we got problems because uh, uh, yeah, we've basically just spunked all our money, bringing players to go back to a system that we started last season with that didn't work and had to be changed. And once it did change, we won an amazing run of winning games. 
until about April or March when it all fell apart again. So good luck with that. Uh, hope we don't ruin the guy. Uh, now, talking about young players, obviously we've got some young, exciting players now. Norton Cuffey, uh, Romain S.A. Edomo and Maku. Very exciting uh, talent. Young talent at the club. And we got this from uh, LondonNewsOnline.co.uk. Uh, Mill Boss admits young striker staking strong claim for starting spot after early championship return. Well, he's he created one goal and scored the other. And we've only scored two goals, so... If you're trying to make something happen, there you go. That's it. So what else? You, what else? You what else do you want? Um, so yeah, Damian Mack has done his starting prospects in all no harm by his impressive start to the championship season. The Irish attacker's surging rank created Romain Essie's winner at Middlesbrough on the opening day. And the Mack, who signed from Shamrock Rovers last January, produced an excellent finish of his own in Sunday's three-one defeat at Norwich City. Uh, there has been a lone interest in, in the 19-year-old, but his performances for the South London club could mean he stays as part of Garrett's squad. Uh, the Mill boss told the South London press, From the start of the pre-season, uh, he's, he's impressed. Last year was all new for him, and he struggled physically to stay fit and stay with the tempo. And that happens sometimes with a player who comes from a different league, a different level. Uh, what he's done this season, he's looked like he's done a lot of work in the summer, that he knows what he needs. Uh, he looks to have taken that next next step physically. He's come back wanting to get in the team. And it's been a brilliant, brilliant attitude from him. He probably felt that a league too low might be something that would get, would have given him extra minutes. Uh, and now he's found himself in and around the first team, setting up goals and, sc and scoring a goal. It's been a brilliant start to the season for him. He's uh, very close to starting. He's certainly in my thoughts when it comes to picking the first 11. Uh, he's got to keep doing that. He will get lots of minutes this season if he continues like he did at the weekend. He's come on in games as a other goal and scored a goal. Statistically, statistically at the moment, he's had a big, big impact. Of course, there is a bit of uh, that which thinks, can he do it from the start? He's got to keep going and doing that. I don't think at the moment we have to look at all the young players to start uh, getting us results, but I also think they haven't done themselves any harm with their performances. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously, I think probably, maybe, the quickest player uh, in the squad. So when you're bringing him on as a substitute, he's got that pace to go up against tired plays. He's obviously going to have an impact. Can he do that from the start? Um, so it might be, obviously, in this day and age, you've got all these subs that you can use. It might be best just to uh, keep bringing him off the bench, but you've got to do it earlier than the 80th minute. You've got to do it earlier than the 60th minute. If we are playing dog shit at half-time in the first half, like, you make the change at half-time. Um, so don't hold back. Uh, so yeah, could be starting against Stoke, maybe. I don't know. Here we go. Uh, this is also Gary Rowett speaking to the Southwark News. That product. a spirit, determination, and front foot football. Mill manager plots path to getting season back on track. Fans have been concerned by early results this season. Gary Rowett is leaning on his experience to turn things around. Uh, I don't think it's the results, it's the abject performances. Um, you're playing five at the back and say, whoa, 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 it's three at the back. It's like, yeah, but we're not going forward. So it's five at the back. Uh, a bullish Garrett out said it stands him and the players to prove people wrong and win back fans. Travelling supporters made their feelings known in the last game against Norwich as they loudly heard their frustration with the performance and style of football. Mill lost 3-1 at Carrow Road, have now been defeated three games on the bounce in all competitions. Well, we always lose at Carrow Road, we haven't won there since 1960-something, uh, so it wasn't the result, it was the performance. Uh, the season had begun with a confidence boost in 1-0 win at Middlesbrough. The mood among fans appears to have soured rapidly since then. Rowett said speeches and sentiments to supporters would not work and the only way to turn things around was by putting wins on the board, starting against his former club, Stoke City, on Saturday. He told the news at Den, I know the players can perform much better. I know we've got individuals in there that can perform much better. And I'm confident that we will. I think that's the key as, as a manager. Sometimes you look and you find it hard to see where you go next. But actually, I'm quite confident that we'll perform much better in the next game. It's clear to me what we need to do and what we've got to do uh, to work hard and make sure we do that. 
Uh, when I look back to last season, we beat teams like uh, Sheffield United and Watford. And everyone spoke about the result and how well we played, and I think that comes from the result. It comes from the energy and the performance. And we've got to give the crowd that, and we've got to give the fans that, because we need to start winning games of football. And if I'm a fan and I've paid my money, I want to see something that I'm infused about. And I'll get that. I understand that. So it's up to us to go out there on Saturday and to perform to a level where everyone enjoys what they see. It's really easy for me to come out now and say, oh, we all need to stick together and work hard together. But I also appreciate that we need to go out and perform over a period of time. If we go out there and show that uh, little bit of spirit and determination from football, football, I know for a fact that the crowd will get behind it. It's as simple as that. Uh, there's no point in me saying uh, anything other than that. It's up to us to put the performance in. And I know the crowd will get behind it, and, that, and that's what we've got to do. Rowett has made it clear he's primarily more concerned with performance levels rather than tactics as he looks to steer Millwall back on course. He said, I don't think the Norwich game was a reflection of the team over a long period of time, and, and what I think we're all keen to get back is that hard work, and that energy, that little bit of grit and spark. That was shown on so many occasions. Uh, we played a five, we played a four. We've high pressed, we've deep blocked. It's about winning games. We played poorly, and everyone has eulogised about how well we played. And that's just the nature of the beast of football in general. I'm not here to justify our style of play. What I'm here to do is win games of football and let everyone else judge what they see. Rowett is the Championship's second current longest serving head coach after Coventry City's Mark Robbins, and will have been in the den hot seat for four years by October. Like most managers, he has come under fire before from fans' bad results, including during his previous spells in charge of Stoke and Derby County. The 49-year-old says those experience, years of experience have left him able to cope with the pressure and assess the early season stumble more clearly. Rowe added, I've managed over 400 games now. I've been in this position before. We were in the same position last season, I think the season before. Oh, I remember up at Peterborough, we played poorly, come under a little bit of stick. I remember last season, after about eight or nine games, it was exactly the same scenario. And we showed a resilience to turn it around. And that's always my mindset, to prove people wrong every game and every day we work. And that's my job to try and do that. Uh, yes, but you changed the formation. You literally changed the formation after the one of the most dog shit performances that we ever had uh, away at Blackburn Rovers. And then we, I think we still only managed a draw against Robin in the next game. But it was a lot better of a performance. So it's not just about running around and, and trying harder. If the formation, it just isn't working. And you brought this new guy in to, to boost up your formation. Because you think, oh, now you get the right players. It would just be like magic. Well, we'll see about that. You will be judged on that as well. So, yeah, I don't dwell on it. I don't go home sat crying for hours on end. I sit there thinking, what can I do to show the determination that being the manager of Mill Football Club requires? And that's what you have to do. Uh, you have to show a bit of fight, a bit of determination. If it's not enough, uh, it's not enough, and that's for other people to judge. But what I do uh, day to day, and that's what I've done for 12 years now. There you go. There is Gary Rout's thoughts now. And here we go with George Savile. So yesterday we had Duncan Watmore coming out speaking about uh, the current crisis, you could call it that. Um, uh, um, this is southwarknews.co.uk. We've got George Savile now. So I live it in, I live in it constantly. I care. Mills George Savile on the difficulty of escaping bad results away from the pitch. The Mill and Fuller's confident lines can bounce back. Loss. Uh, George Sauer has admitted that it's hard to escape the world of football when things are not going your way. Mill have lost three games in a row in all competitions, were outplayed at the City on Sunday in a match that triggered negative chanting from the Travelling Lions fans. And while experienced Savile 30 is used to the ups and downs of football and assists the squad have moved on from Norwich, he says that he personally always has the game on his mind. He told the news at 10, oh, I live in it constantly, it's probably my worst thing. Football, I don't really escape. When it's good, it's good, and when it's bad, it's with me and my wife gets it on the other end, and that's just how I am. I'm emotional, I care, and I think the day I stop caring, it, it will be a concern, so yeah, I live in it. The midfielder has already put his mind forward to Stoke City, where an expectant home crowd will want Mill to kickstart their season 
after a couple of false starts. Savile believes that the issues caused the Carrow Road unravelling have been addressed and are being worked on. He said, obviously it was a disappointing day for all of us, but it's not a time to dwell on it. We know where we've gone wrong and what we need to do to put it right. And now it's about being positive and looking forward to Saturday. For me, um, staying focused is fine. I know, I know how this football club is. It's going to have its ups and downs. And the biggest thing now is to get everyone focused for Saturday. Uh, it's like anything. When you're winning games, you feel great. And you don't think about anything. And when you're losing games, you start overthinking, wondering what you can and can't do and what you're not doing correctly. But we've been in football long enough that it takes one result, one goal, and everything changes. And let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We lost two games this season in the league and won one. It's a long season. On the bright side for Mill has been the emergence of teenagers Romain S.A. and Daniel Macca with the pair, the only two players who have scored a goal in Mill's first four games of the season. Savile added, oh, it's brilliant. Uh, they've been given an opportunity and, uh, and they've embraced it. They've stepped up. Uh, Ron McMillers, Rene Domu stepping up at the weekend. It's brilliant. Uh, they're 18, 19-year-old kids. It's fantastic for us to be able to have players like that in the squad from the start to bring on that you can have that impact. Uh, they're good lads. They want to learn, which is the biggest thing. They want to improve. They listen and they work hard. We've uh, got all the attributes. So I reckon uh, they'll get better and better. Uh, as they get a bit more experience. Yes, indeed. Fantastic stuff. From the young talent so far this season. Uh, now, moving on to this. Obviously, last week, the club, the auction for the uh, Bristol City shirts that had the embroidered uh, JGB logo and um, the match uh, details on it, went on auction, raised about £8,000. Now you've got the warm-up tops going, going on uh, sales or to try and raise money for the uh, John Berylson Memorial Fund, a legacy fund. Uh, so here we go. Uh, special edition signed warm-up warm -up t-shirts from Mills Game with Bristol City are up for auction with match-worn shirt with profits going to the John Berylson Legacy Fund. Supporters can bid on the t-shirts worn by the starting 11 and substitutes from the fixture against Robbins. With bidding open now, um, uh, they've been signed. Um, Auctions close at 1.30 on Sunday. So a very short time for this this one. Um, last time they were on for like a week. This time it's only from 24th to the 27th. So just three days. And let's have a look and see what we're doing with that. So, so far, we've got Zion Fleming 232. Kevin Nisbet 207. So two days left. Not much. Not much time for that. Um, you could get one for 77 or 76 is the lowest bid on a Domu Maku. For some reason, that's out of order. Maybe it's uh, supposed to be 77 as well. I was going to look at that. But yeah, um, would this be. Would this be. Um, more collectible than the home shirts, even though the home shirt was embroidered uh, with a special thing saying it was from that day. You could buy a home shirt uh, with a name and number on and go and get it signed. Uh, how many of these can you can you get? Like just the ones that you see here. Um, however many was that? Nineteen, twenty, whatever. Uh, twenty. So uh, that's it. That's that's all there is, and quite a unique piece of uh, mule memorabilia. And uh, obviously, the club trying to raise money for whatever they're doing, a statue, whatever they need to do, um, for, for John Berylson. Um So yeah, uh, here we go. And. Um, Speaking of earlier, the game at, at home at Stoke, well, obviously, the Mill have put out this travel update because obviously the trains seem to be messed up again. This is from millwfc.co.uk. It's a Saturday. Um, the train driver's on strike or something. Or, oh, no, I think it might be... Uh, I think it might be... Uh, what do you call it? Um, engineering work. Uh, train travel to Mills Skybet Championship fixture against Stoke City on Saturday, 26th of August, will be disrupted. 
Um, so yeah, check your journeys. You go to Surrey Keys, you go to Bermondsey on Jubilee Line, or you go to the buses uh, to the Old Kent Road. You know where it goes by now if you're a Mule fan. This has been happening for the last two years. It's annoying and it's uh, messed up. And uh, it's amazing that so many fans, like there was a game, one of the games where we sold a lot of tickets, sell out was on one of these days. It was pretty incredible that the fans um, found a way, took the time, extra time to get to the ground and uh, still went there and still still uh, sold all those tickets. So yeah, check your journey before Saturday um, and let's hope uh, we get a result so that the long journey home uh, isn't uh, arduous and is enjoyable because Millwall won this game and you're happy that that happened. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.